Brace yourselves and your stomachs, because I'm getting into the greasiest, slimiest, and rawest disasters ever shown on camera. That's right, I'm taking a dive into some of the worst dishes from Kitchen Nightmares, and the restaurants that had the gall to serve them. These chefs straight up served customers a side of complimentary food poisoning with their meals. Oh yeah, believe me, today we're going to get into all the gory, disgusting details of when customers got sick on the show. Just like in this episode, where Ramsey, the staff, and the customers all joined hands and walked into hell together. I'm talking about Mama Rita's in Newberry Park, California. The restaurant was owned by Laura Pappenfuss, who initially had a successful catering business. But then, due to popular demand, she decided to open a restaurant. What could go wrong, right? Well, things went downhill fast. The first week was like a fiesta, but three weeks later, Mama Rita's was as empty as a ghost town. <laughs> And here's the kicker. Laura managed to rack up a jaw-dropping 2.2 million in debt. And her house was next up on the chopping block if things didn't get better. Now, when Ramsey arrived, this was his first impression. This place looks stunning. Thank you. My goodness me. Somebody spent a lot of money here. But he was also probably thinking Laura mortgaged the moon to decorate the place because, well, just look at it, you guys. It's pretty clear it was a case of high-end decor meets sky-high debt. Anyway, Ramsey sat down to try the food and he was served by Brad, the head waiter. But what did Brad do? He advised Ramsey to steer clear of some dishes. Malotes. <laughs> Taquitos, Ooh. empanadas, de pollo. Ah, you love to see it. The tamales were the first to come out, and Ramsey's reaction was extraordinary. It's like soaking wet newspaper. Jeez, that is so dry. That's not all. When the chimichanga arrived, Ramsey could tell it had been nuked before it was deep fried. It's dry. It's shards of dry chicken. And now what? Yeah. The chicken had never even heard the concept of being juicy. Finally, the steak burrito made its way to Ramsey's table, and the way he described it was pretty interesting. Jesus. That's like eating wet cardboard. Have a taste of that, please. Yeah, it really was that bad. Brad took a bite of the steak and immediately regretted it. The steak was gamey, it was kind of like a car wash, moist and mushy. And that's not even the end of it, because the poor thing ended up throwing it all up. Didn't we taste everything before we put it out? Yes. Now, Ramsey was pissed. He let the staff know each and every way their food sucked. And as if the guy didn't have enough of this place yet, Ramsey decided to observe the kitchen during dinner service. The food was flying out, but guess what? Customers were sending it right back. Must have been serving boomerangs. <laughs> Amateur mistake. That's when Ramsey decided to do some detective work in the freezer and uncovered a gold mine of frozen food. Look at that shit. <laughs> A year old. Yep, he found trays upon trays of pre-cooked frozen meals, and some were so old that they may as well have been fossilized. By Ramsey's calculations, it was worth around $12,000 of frozen junk. After seeing this chilling disaster, Ramsey decided that it was time for Mama Rita to defrost itself. Laura finally woke up to the fact that her Titanic of a restaurant was sinking. And hey, they had the icebergs to prove it. But before the place sank for good, Ramsey brought in some past customers to help them figure out what they wanted. Turns out, none of them were happy with the service or the food. Some of them even ended up, well, the title of the video should clue you in. And when I came here two months later, I got sick again, and I kind of stayed away. Defrosting food. What an awful experience. And that was hardly an individual complaint. The whole table kind of got stomach issues afterwards. Ouch. Finally. Laura saw the situation for what it was. It's good that she realized the town expected real food and not whatever she'd been serving. I mean, that part should go without saying, but better late than never. However, 
In this next episode, things took a crazy turn when Ramsey was practically begging the priest to say a prayer. Wondering why? Because Ramsey was scared for his life. No joke. Bless Chef Gordon as he is about to receive it, that it may nourish him. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. This time around, Ramsey was hitting up Jay Willie's in South Bend, Indiana. This joint was all about barbecue and was owned by a trio, Rick, Trisha, and their buddy John William. No, not that John Williams, that's the guy who composed for Star Wars. I'm talking about this guy. Now, they were located in South Bend, which is also home to Notre Dame, so you'd think that they'd have more customers than they'd know what to do with, right? Well... I don't think we'll come back. Unless something sticks. At first, Jay Willies was rolling in business, making some serious cash. But here's where it all went wrong. Since Rick and Trisha owned another restaurant three hours away, they left John to run the show solo, figuring he could handle it. No sweat. But they were dead wrong. This place is so depressing. It's hard to even talk about it because it just makes me want to cry. John admitted they'd been struggling, and the cash wasn't flowing anymore. But here's the kicker. We don't have a chef in the kitchen. I'm just here to, to serve what he wants me to serve. And You heard that right. They didn't even have a chef in the kitchen. It was just some dude named Steve whipping up canned and store-bought stuff just to get food out fast. As the negative reviews piled up, the rest was history. And that was just a frozen patty. I'd rather have a little bit of bacon burn. That was really gross. When Ramsey rolled in, he was asking questions from the jump. Well, that looks like it closed down 10 years ago. Let's hope inside is much better. And what about the flashy sign out front? That's that ghastly sign at the bottom. Whenever a sign's flashing, it means desperation. God, you can smell the desperation. Anyway, Ramsey met John, Rick, and Trisha and took a look at the menu. But hold up, those pictures on the menu were looking a little off. Always nervous when there's menus with ghastly pictures. Despite that, Ramsey ordered a loaded baked potato pizza, beef ribs, and a pulled pork cheese boat. While waiting for his food, Ramsey was left to soak in the depressing atmosphere of the place. And a carpet that looks like it's had a thousand buffaloes walking all over it. Holy shit. But what he did next? Well, you gotta see it to believe it. Would you mind just blessing my food? Oh, yeah, oh would you? sure. Yeah, if you'd be so kind. Absolutely. Before he took a bite, he asked a priest at a nearby table to bless his food. Not a good look. But no amount of divine intervention was gonna save the food. The pizza was drowning in ranch, the ribs were just sad, and the pulled pork sandwich was loaded with heaps and heaps of processed cheese. Ramsey refused to let those priests eat the pulled pork sandwiches they had ordered. Yeah, dude stepped in to play guardian angel for them. They'd have probably ended up at the pearly gates otherwise. Um, sorry, excuse me. Forgive me, Father, but oh. they have sinned, and I, out of respect for you guys, you're not going to eat that, okay? okay? By now, it should be obvious that the food was either canned or frozen, not least of which was the barbecue sauce, which came out of a ginormous plastic wholesale container. Oh, yeah, John was cutting corners big time. According to him, he was just trying to save on labor because, well, they had no chef. But that doesn't make it right. The kitchen staff were reheaters, not cooks. Man, I don't even know what to say. I don't know, come up with a funny joke in the comments or something. I'm just depressed as hell after that fiasco. But it gets worse. This next restaurant went down in history for getting a customer hospitalized. We're headed over to Mama Maria's in Brooklyn, New York. Now, Mama Maria's wasn't just any old joint. It's the sister restaurant to Sal's Pizzeria, which was pretty popular back in the day. Still is, even. Picture this. Sal and Maria, the dynamic duo, snag Sal's Pizzeria in the groovy 70s. And all was good, till their son John Esposito stepped into the spotlight in the 90s. John, a restaurant prodigy since he was knee-high to a pizza box, grew up in the family business. By the time he took charge, they'd even gobbled up the place next door. Years went by, and when his mom Maria passed away, they renamed the space Mama Maria's in her honor. 
Sweet, right? But this is where the drama unfolds. Sales had been tumbling in both restaurants, and poor John was drowning in it all. His father passed away, his mom passed away, he was the only one in charge of everything, and as the years passed, it started to go down. The fact that he had a stubborn streak and let his kids run wild in the place only made things worse. He's got four kids that are always here running around the restaurant. Let's see if Ramsey can salvage this historical gem, huh? When Ramsey first arrived, he wasn't exactly wowed. Mama Maria's. What is that? That is ghastly. Holes everywhere. The place looked like it had seen better days, with a tattered awning barely hanging on to the restaurant's name. God, there's a metaphor here somewhere. Anyway, Ramsey spotted a promising note on the menu. Pasta made daily on the premises. All the pasta's made fresh on a daily basis. Yep. Excited, he ordered tortellini di patate, spaghetti and meatballs, and a classic margarita pizza. Now, here's where things took a bizarre turn. Fran, the server, brought over the desserts, but you won't believe how that went. And that, uh, that mold on there. No, the butter's on top, so it covers that. To Ramsey's disbelief, Fabio then made a real cheap excuse. Now those are just for display. Because they're for display, you've got the right to cake them in mold. Despite the hesitation, Ramsey proceeded to try the tortellini. But its strongest flavor was freezer burn. And guess how Lori took it? The tortellinis are frozen. Oh, they are frozen? They are. So you advertise you're making it daily, but you freeze it daily. So what does fresh pasta frozen for another day mean? Wasn't it clearly mentioned on the menu that all the dishes were supposedly made fresh on site? Ramsey decided to call their bluff, but before that, he dug into the meatballs. Well, I say that, but Ramsey didn't want to taste them. Dry, disgusting, frozen meatballs. And finally, when it was time for the pizza, it was literally drowning in grease. Ramsey was pretty sure John wasn't even tasting the food before it hit the tables. And what was John's reaction. You have to watch this. I take it he wasn't thrilled with the feedback, but we haven't even gotten to the dinner service yet. Ramsey spotted John in the corner, laser focused on making pizzas, completely oblivious to everything else. The rest of the kitchen crew were blindly following his recipes to cook the remaining dishes, which, uh, maybe they need some new recipes. The shells are like frozen. It looks like it's freezer burned. One vegetarian diner got quite the surprise when she discovered this in her tomato sauce. What's that? A bone. A bone. I'm a vegetarian. Turns out, the supposedly plain tomato sauce had pork bones and sausage bits in it. Not a great day to be a vegetarian. Another customer ordered a lobster tail and ended up feeling sick almost instantly. Okay. Go. Yeah, your lobster's ready. It didn't take long for Ramsey to realize the lobster was way past its prime and probably had more ammonia in it than drain cleaner. It was so bad that John had to do this. A guy had some lobster and he has a reaction to it. The gentleman sitting down. Gosh, imagine serving that. Calling an ambulance for them was the first good decision he made that day. But the event had ruined all the other diners' appetites, so the restaurant had to shut down. The crazy part was that no one paid for their meals that day. That's how awful it was. But Ramsey wasn't going to stop with a shuttered restaurant. He took John aside and laid it out plain and simple. This mess was his fault. John seemed defeated, behaving more like a staff member than an owner. But Ramsey came in with a pep talk, telling John that he needed to change and succeed, not just for himself, but for the sake of his children. And while you're at your lowest point, there ain't nobody who can give you better therapy than Ramsey. Well, we've all seen customers complain about bad food, but in this next one, brace yourself for customers complaining about good food. Confused? Stick around, I gotcha. You see, Sammy Settembre, the owner of Sabatello's in Stamford, Connecticut, had forever dreamt of running a fine dining establishment. However, after a brief run of success, the restaurant had been on a downward spiral, teetering on the edge of closure. 
Sammy's blatant rudeness towards his staff and customers definitely didn't help matters, but he believed it wasn't his fault and blamed the staff for not listening to him. Sammy and his girlfriend Lauren had staked their house as collateral and were drowning in debt. Now, before heading to Sabatello's, Ramsey decided to go over a few negative reviews just to prepare himself. Food review, Sabatello's, uh, food mediocre, don't get robbed. The owner is the most obnoxious human being I've ever dealt with. Upon arrival, he was warmly welcomed, and he was pretty impressed by the decor. My god, look at this. Isn't it inviting, nice and warm? It is nice and warm. But he got down to brass tacks fast. Ramsey ordered the soup of the day, homemade lasagna, and a New York strip steak cooked medium rare. However, the food was disappointing. Shocker, I know. The soup lacked flavor and was suspiciously quick to arrive. Like a mismatch of bits of shit put together and brought to the boil and anemic gray meatballs in there. Meanwhile, the homemade lasagna was made with white meat and clearly not freshly made. The New York strip steak wasn't any better. It was way too greasy and way off from medium rare. Now, despite it all, Ramsey insisted that frozen ingredients weren't necessarily bad. But Ramsey wasn't prepared for what he was about to hear next. The head chef Jose revealed that the soup was days old. The lasagna was prepared days ago and frozen, and the steak wasn't the advertised cut. Tensions soared when Ramsey tore into Sammy. So it's not fresh, that's what I'm trying to say. But doesn't right. mean it's bad. Does it mean it's bad? Was this guy out of his freaking mind? How could he say that while running a restaurant? Maybe in your own house, but not in a fine dining establishment. But in a kitchen nightmare's first, when Ramsey inspected the kitchen, he found it to be surprisingly clean. However, the fridge was another issue altogether. What the fuck? Raw chicken and cooked chicken. Yep. It was filled with both raw and cooked chicken. Can anyone say cross-contamination? But Sammy didn't think it mattered. That's raw chicken, Sammy. We can't put them close by each other? Oh, come on. Things took a bizarre turn when Ramsey discovered that Sabatello's stuffed sole dish was filled with imitation crab meat. And before Ramsey could stop that mistake from making its way to the dining room, one unlucky customer happened to face the consequences of eating that hideous dish. <laughs> Yeah, she was struggling to keep the food down, poor thing. But Sammy, you have to see what he thought about it. Not bad, though. It's not bad. Not bad. Yeah. He thought it was perfect. And then it just got worse and worse. Undercooked beef was sent back to the kitchen, which caused Sammy to do something unexpected. All right, put it in the microwave. Just put it in the microwave. Put it in a minute and a half. Yeah, he just tossed it into the microwave, all casual-like. Oh, boy. Sadly for him, this customer turned out to be smarter than the rest. She sent it back again, and this led to a heated argument. No, we're going to throw that out and make you a new one. No one's talking about microwave. They came out of a microwave. Otherwise, they wouldn't be, like, exuding. I can't believe he actually asked her this. Do you work for a microwave company? You know so much about a microwave. Damn. Wish he'd shown some of that confidence in the way he prepared his food. Because when the food reached the customer's table after a refire, was it any better? You know what? I'm done. No more chances. Unbelievable. You know how they say third time's the charm? Guess Sammy never heard of it. Get ready for another crazy ride of tasteless, slimy, and downright revolting dishes as we dive into the most disgusting dishes served on Kitchen Nightmares. Just like this one right here, which legitimately could have killed Ramsay then and there. All right, so Ramsey was off to Bonaparte's in Silsden, England, and boy, was this one hell of a travesty. So this is where he met this young chef and his supposed sous chef, if you could even call them that. Anyway, they were pumped to show off their signature dish. Scallops with uh, deep fried powder and black pudding sauce hollandaise. Sounds good, right? But even the best laid plans never survive contact with the enemy. And they were quick to make an enemy out of Ramsey, since they had the audacity to serve him rancid scallops. <coughs> He's only gone and given me a rancid scallop. No, I'm not kidding. 
He literally sprinted to throw that atrocity up and then came right back to give them a piece of his mind. How can you eat that? Oh. If you knew they were off, didn't. what didn't you say? Gosh, you gotta wonder if they were trying to poison the guy. And you won't believe this. The young chef had the audacity to turn to the camera and say, I know what he means. I feel a bit sick too. Like seriously, don't think now is the time for jokes, dude. I mean, this viewer was on point with her comment. I mean, yeah, what kind of head chef can't cook an omelet, braise steak, or even tell if their produce is literally rotting right in front of them? But if it was at all possible, it gets worse. Ramsey was already pulling his hair out and grasping at straws to find something good to say about the place. But no such luck, unfortunately. The kitchen was a mess, the head chef had lost his touch, and the food, I mean, come on, we saw those scallops. He's got a hands full running the bar upstairs and seems blissfully unaware of the farce that's taking place in the basement. But hey, Ramsey's not one to give up. The man tried his best to salvage something, anything from the place, which is why he challenged the chef to cook a special signature dish that would blow his mind. And what does our head chef whip up? Scallops. Too soon, man too soon. In his defense, this time he served it with a side of black pudding and hollandaise sauce. Although it looked alright, Ramsey was skeptical. Despite his better judgment, he took a bite, and it would be a bite he'd come to regret for the rest of his life. It was still rotten. Total lack of direction for the management, and they've tried their best to kill me with a rotten scallop. Don't look at me, guys. I don't know how he shat the bed back to back like that any more than you do. By this point, he had to have been beyond through with the place. Well, the show's called Kitchen Nightmares, so he at least knew what he was signing up for. Or at least I hope so. However, the bottom line is, Ramsey wasn't playing around. He was ready to tear this place apart before putting it back together brick by brick. He'd go to any lengths to fix the place, and to avoid a tainted scallop hat trick. And that meant they had to step up their game big time. But will Bonaparte survive Ramsey's wrath? Well, stick around and keep an eye on your sub box, and you might just find out. Meanwhile, Ramsey got involved in some heavy action at Cafe 36 in LaGrange, Illinois, right outside of Chi Town. You see, Ramsey was here to save the day, or at least give it an honest effort. The waiter was chill and willing to answer anything Ramsey asked, so props to him. But the menu, oh man, it was like they threw whatever they had in a blender and hoped for the best. Ramsey ordered the duck salad, the wild mushroom risotto, and the salmon crepes. But guess what? The crepes were not special at all. Oops. When you think of a crepe, you think of something nice, light, crispy, not something mushy. Pinto, the head chef, acted so confident, saying Ramsey's presence didn't faze him. But come on, I can see his nerves a mile away. And I'm sure Ramsey felt it in the slop he called food. But before he'd get to chow down on that slop, he'd have to wait. And wait, and wait, and maybe wait a little more. For a whopping 40 minutes. But when it finally arrived... Well, calling it not worth the wait would be the understatement of the century. The risotto is mush and it just disintegrates. Barney, the sous chef, couldn't help but laugh because he'd been telling Pinto this for ages. But with Ramsey here, maybe those deaf ears of Pinto's would finally get the message. He went into the kitchen and found out that the rice in that risotto was at least a week old. But that's not the only stale food he was serving. I was very shocked to find out uh, that we were not serving fresh products. Such a horrible feeling. And what was Pinto's defense, you ask? He went like... Oh, it was in the refrigerator, so it should be all good. Yeah, no, I don't think so, buddy. And it wasn't just Ramsey who was baffled by the state of the place. Fans of the show were barely able to fathom it either. One viewer pointed out how they didn't have any problem defrosting some fish before stuffing it and throwing it right back in. Well, I'm sorry, you're not gonna get any answers out of me, Alex, since I have no freaking clue either. All right, let's leave that disgrace of a restaurant behind for, well, yet another disgrace. So Ramsey just landed in California, and he was ready to check out the legendary burger joint, Burger Kitchen. But something was majorly off from the moment he stepped in. Ramsey took a good look around, and he wasn't impressed with the place. I mean, dirty floors and all that? Come on, guys. Even Sammy and Amy over at Amy's Baking Company took the time to deep clean the place before he showed up. 
You could at least give him that. However, the floors were small fry compared to the food, so he went ahead and ordered a selection of burgers, including the cowboy burger and a couple that were apparently award-winning. But what he got? Well, they weren't even worthy of a participation trophy. Bread's just sweet, bland, tasteless, raw meat. Sweet and doughy buns stuffed with tasteless meat. Not a great effort, you guys. Oh, but that one wasn't award-winning. Totally, totally makes sense. No wonder it sucked. This one. Now, this one was the real deal. Well, Ramsey was definitely speechless. Wow, it's raw. That's the award-winning burger. So they had that going for them. Well, he was, at least until he pointed out how raw it was. Meanwhile, Chef David was sweating bullets, trying to put his best foot forward to wow Ramsey. But here comes the cowboy burger, complete with a tiny hat and everything. But Ramsey wasn't amused. The thing was $39, which honestly just could have been how much the grease coming out of the thing cost. Now, I have no idea what the chef was up to in this episode, but one viewer confirmed that it's not what a meat pie is supposed to look like. Good thing, Harry, otherwise I'd be wondering what the hell was going on down there. But things got even weirder at this next restaurant. You see, Ramsey took us over to Yanni's Greek restaurant in Seattle, Washington. Now, you must be thinking, we're gonna be in for some Greek goodness, right? Like, I can eat two euros without even blinking. Well, not so fast. The place was owned by Peter Augustillo, someone who had apparently been ignoring some serious issues. When Gordon arrived, he was greeted by Karen, Peter's wife and their daughters, Elise and Taria. They were quick to point out that everything about the place was outdated, but for some reason, nobody seemed to care. But we can talk about decor all day. Ramsey was here for the food, first and foremost. He could fix the wallpaper later. But boy, oh boy, he was in for a wild ride. That's not all the menu, surely, to help. It's a Bible. Uh, it's an encyclopedia. The menu was more like a book than a menu. Seriously, more than six pages and nine specials? Who has the time to read that, let alone cook it? Anyway, he decided to try the pumpkin hummus. And let's just say it wasn't exactly doing them any favors. I don't like the combination. And the garlic in there. Well, Blood garlic, that's a lot. I mean, I could eat an entire jar of the stuff without even realizing it, but... Pumpkin hummus? Yeah, no thanks. Next up, it was time for some moussaka. Pretty weird, the meat is very sweet, and yet the eggplant is very bitter. The eggplant is undercooked. Greasy, butter, undercooked. Man, give Ramsey a break, you guys. Give him something. Oh, but don't even get me started on the euro. My poor, beautiful boy. How they massacred you so. It was messy as hell and literally drowning in sauce. Like, seriously, dude. Want a little lamb with your tzatziki? Overall, everything about the place was a mess, with no saving grace to speak of. But wait, the adventure doesn't end there. Ramsey then decided to check out the place's storage, and, well, it was a disaster that put everything that had come before it to shame. No date, nothing labeled. It stinks and it's disgusting. I mean, what the heck was this? Like, tons and tons of old, stinky produce, raw meat next to cooked meat? Disgusting. How every health inspector within 50 miles wasn't running to put a stop to this madness is beyond me. Like, the fridge was full of cooked chicken and moldy boiled beef. I have no words, you guys. No words. It's moldy. What is that? Well, in the lieu of a health inspector, Ramsey was the only person in the building worried about the diner's safety. So, he did what needed to be done. Hey. No, you can't let you cook anymore. Yeah, the size. Yep, he shut the place down. Good thing, too, since they were cruising towards a lawsuit at the rate they were going. But hey, maybe this was a wake-up call for Peter and the gang. Or maybe they're still rubbing raw chicken all over their vegetables to this day. Who's to say? Someone actually pointed out it was a tough call to decide what was worse, bad food or food that didn't make sense. What do you think? If you ask me, I think the chef better call it quits and look for another line of work. Because clearly, he wasn't up for it. But you know what they say, the more the merrier, right? Well, at this next restaurant, 
too many cooks would be more apt. You see, Ramsey was on a mission to save the day at Fiesta Sunrise, a Mexican restaurant in West Nyack, New York. But Vic, Patty, and Yolanda, the trio of owners, made some seriously dumb decisions. Vic and Yolanda couldn't afford to start the restaurant themselves, so they put their daughter Patty in charge of the money. Because, you know, of course they did. Like, Patty was Vic's stepdaughter, not even his biological kid. Like, she didn't ask for this, you guys. I resent my mother. She put her husband before me. So anyway, Ramsey pulled up to the restaurant and the sign said, Grill 303. And obviously, he was probably wondering if he was at the right place. Turns out, they just never bothered to change the logo from the old grill for 303 days. Grill 303? What the is that? Maybe I'm too late. Seriously, guys, how are you expecting people to find you? But the craziness doesn't stop there. Ramsey discovered another sticker on the door, saying Fiesta Garibaldi. Like, finding the place shouldn't be this much of an ordeal, you guys. Anyway, Ramsey was ready to try some food after he, you know, finally found the place. Ah, the art of Mexican cooking. He ordered one taco, one burrito, one enchilada, and a fajita too. Pretty standard stuff. He was hoping for some delicious food. But come on, this place is on my most disgusting list. What else did you expect? Chicken's so dry. It tastes like it's been cooked. That burrito looked like someone puked on it, and the chicken may as well have been made out of drywall. Emphasis on dry. And don't even get Ramsey started on the rice. It looks older than fucking me. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Ramsey checked out the kitchen and Boy, was he stunned. What have you done to it? Why is it all stuck in there with blood at the bottom of the tray? The fridge was filled with ancient food. Yeah, no way any of that was safe to eat. Then a customer sent back their food, saying it was like cardboard. Oh my God. <laughs> When's all this from? And guess what the server did? You take them from the table back into the drawer. Did you see that? And you put them back into the drawer. He literally put the chips back with the rest of them. Seriously, guys, I shouldn't need to tell you not to do that, but for the sake of posterity, <clears throat> don't do that. But the race to the bottom continues. Guess what Ramsey found next? Cockroaches. Yeah, you heard that right, cockroaches. Honestly, I'm surprised they were there in the first place. Not like they were serving anything that could be considered food. A viewer made their concerns pretty clear about how Ramsey manages to go through these sort of trials and tribulations without getting sick. I mean, if those rotten scallops from earlier on the list were any indication. Look at that, that's Friday. Look at my fingers. To top it off, Vic admitted he knew about the infestation, and that sent Ramsey over the edge. He could forgive ignorance, but negligence? Absolutely no excuse. Well, with that said, Ramsey kicked everyone out and shut the restaurant down for the night. Because, obviously, an infestation like that is gonna need a team of exterminators working through the night to even make a dent into it. So there you have it, folks. A Mexican restaurant with more drama than a telenovela, and food that, well, calling it food would be generous. Well, I hope Ramsey can work his magic and turn this nightmare into a fiesta, but to further answer that question from that last comment, Ramsey isn't invincible, because this next restaurant ended up making him sick. Oh my god, look, there they are there, in refrigeration. Oh. We're talking about Dylan's Lounge, a joint owned by Mohammed Islam, smack dab in the heart of bustling NYC. Couldn't ask for a better place to own a business, right? Well, let's see how badly he's managed to squander it. So, Dylan's claimed to be an Irish American restaurant with Indian flair. Not the most common culinary fusion, but fine, I'll give it a pass for now. You know, give it a chance and all that. Now, Ramsey was ready to check the place out, but he'd have to fight with the flies over it. He was already swatting them away before he placed his order. Huge menu. Uh, am I right in thinking there's two kitchens? There's two different chefs in one kitchen. Not off to a good start. And just like our good pals over at Fiesta Sunrise, they've got not one, not two, but three managers running the show. Martin, Andrew, and Khan. They never learn, do they? But let's get down to business. Ramsey was hungry. He ordered an array of dishes, assorted veggie appetizers, lamb biryani, beef buna, and salmon niçoise from the American menu. 
A tall order for any chef. Let's see if he'll impress, shall we? First up, the veg platter with meat. Uh, wait, ho hold on, let me check my notes here. Veg with meat, no, no, I said that right. Probably shouldn't be advertising it as vegetarian then, huh? And this is how Ramsey reacted to it. Tastes like blam. If he were a vegetarian, I would expect a lawsuit. Ooh, someone's in hot water. Now onto the beef and lamb, but wait a minute, there's something wrong. It's not a piece of beef. Does that look like a piece of beef to you? It's dry. Mystery meat, my favorite. But hey, maybe the American menu can save the day. Yeah, you wish. Cause Ramsey took one look at the salmon niçoise and was completely done. Not exactly rolling out the red carpet here, you guys. Well, Ramsey has to make sure the chef understood what was going wrong, loud and clear. Let's see how that little heart to heart worked out. Can you explain to Gomez? Yes, yeah. That we've got to stop putting things on the floor. But hold on. It gets worse, way worse. Ramsey decided to inspect the kitchen himself and discovered yet another travesty. It's rotten, Mohammed. Tell him in your language he'll kill somebody. We can't just have one clean kitchen, you guys. Rotten tomatoes, bizarre looking meat, and flies, flies everywhere. Well, guess we figured out where they came from at least. And just when you thought things couldn't get any worse, Ramsey started feeling sick. But you won't be able to wrap your head around what the chef admitted right after that. Where are your standards? Standards Look at it. Not exactly what I'd call a delicacy right there. But the true horror had yet to come. Roaches were crawling around, and then the rats were falling from the sky. Yeah, just, yeah. I don't give a f what anyone says. Can you go and tell them that the kitchen is closed? Ramsey had it up to here with the place, and he was ready to shut down Dylan's Lounge ASAP. Oh boy, I am definitely sounding like a broken record at this point. Bad food, bad kitchen, infestation. Bad food, bad kitchen, infestation. Anyway, there you have it, folks. Another stomach-turning kitchen nightmares adventure with Gordon Ramsay. Will Dylan's Lounge rise from the depths of kitchen disasters? Well, like I said before, keep an eye on your sub boxes. Now, let's check out the disasters that awaited at the Spanish Pavilion in Jersey. This place was run by Antonio Fernandez, but he passed the torch to his daughter Balbina and her grandsons, Michael and Jerry. When Gordon rolled in, the vibe was so somber he wondered if he was at a funeral. Not exactly restaurant appropriate. You all look immaculately formal, but tuxedos, undertakers at a funeral. But hey, Balbina and Jerry were here to welcome him, with some awkwardness. And then came in the manager, Joe, who claimed Jerry doesn't care about the business. Oh, if I had a nickel. And Joe's not done yet. He thought Michael shouldn't be called a chef since he's more into his phone than cooking. Looks like Ramsey's got his work cut out for him. Again, time to check out the menu. And Ramsey went all in with the lobster bisque, paella, and the chicken and garlic main. Let's start off with lobster bisque. Okay, sir. I'll go for the uh, paella marinara. But oh boy, the lobster. Dead lobster, anyone? Jerry said it was from the tank in the dining room, but when they checked, this is what they found. Look, dead. Decomposed, soft, dead. People couldn't stop talking about how disgusting it was. And that wouldn't be the last we'd see of dead lobsters littering the place. Because Michael thought it was cool to use the dead lobster for dishes. Seriously, dude, do you even know the basics of food safety? Ramsey met Michael and he was all like, oh, we check the tank daily and freeze any dead lobsters. It's all good. Give me those crab legs right those now. Those crab legs have to be finished Michael, cooking. do what you're doing. Don't cook them out. But wait, there was more madness to come. When the chicken and garlic dish arrived, it was swimming in oil. And the chicken, dry as all hell. The paella was no better, over seasoned and burnt to a crisp at the bottom. Like the sokarat's supposed to be golden brown, not black. Ramsey was quick to let the staff know about the disaster they had on their hands. But amidst it all, Michael stood tall, saying that he was proud of the food they've cooked. Think you need to get your priorities straight, dude. But you won't believe what this next owner used his fridge for. Dog food in the fridge? That's the fish bag. It's what? God. We're talking about Doug, the owner of Seascape Inn in Islop, New York. 
The joint opened way back in 62, and it used to be the bomb. Like, any place that had been open for that long had to have been. But soon, it started to sink, now that it was run by Irene and her son Peter. Once Ramsey arrived, he ordered the Cajun Atlantic salmon, crab cakes, and lobster ravioli. While waiting, he noticed that the place smelled like sewage and that the walls were crumbling. Crab cake just falls apart. A bit like the decor. You touch it, it just disintegrates. Lovely. And when the food finally arrived, the crab cakes were beyond disintegrated, just like the decor. Soggy. Strange taste inside. They're definitely not fresh. And the lobster ravioli? Not much better, to be honest. Next, Ramsey choked on dry, powdery cookies. Those hit the trash just as quick. But as is tradition, Ramsey unleashed his wrath on the chef and the owners. You dirty pig! This is disgusting! But nothing prepared him for what he was about to see next. All those disgusting kitchens we talked about before? Well, this health hazard put all of them to shame. When was that cleaned? Oh my god. The fridge was a moldy mess, and the pesto sauce served during lunch was moldy too. And then, surprise, the owner Doug had some disgusting pork in the fridge. But he claimed that it was just his personal meal. Uh, Doug, that's not helping. I'm closing it down. How many's booked? About 20. Forget it. Anyway, now that I never want to eat anything ever again, it's off to Mill Street Bistro in Norwalk, Ohio, the so-called high-quality farm-to-table restaurant. What's the name tag for? We've always had this since we opened. But we're not a chain, are we? We are not. No. Ramsey was excited to check out the menu, and what they had to offer sounded pretty good. Elk medallions, perch, largemouth bass, sounds good on paper, right? But quesadillas on a fancy bistro menu? Well, that set off some alarm bells. Broken, but I had to spit that out because it's bitter. Ramsey's face said it all when the French onion soup arrived. What a disaster. So much fat on top of it. Greasy. Next up was the rubbery scallops, raw gooey ravioli, and ice-cold veggie pasta. Farm to garbage, more like it. Ramsey couldn't believe Joe Nagy's claims about how all the food was fresh and scratch-made. But then, Chef Tom spilled the beans. Everything was frozen. Where is it? Is there a local cafe nearby or? A berries. And don't even get Ramsey started on the ridiculous upcharged prices for that supposed quality. Well, Ramsey had no other option but to just straight up eat somewhere else. And well, that's about the best idea I've heard all video. These are the times when chefs really put the nightmares in kitchen nightmares for their customers. And this chef right here almost made a lethal mistake. Yeah, I'm talking about Mama Maria's in Brooklyn, New York a joint venture with Sal's Pizzeria. Both the joints were cruising smoothly until their son, John Esposito, assumed control in 1990. As the years passed, it started to go down. We don't have that kind of volume of sales. You see, John wasn't exactly a savvy businessman, and his kids seemed to treat the restaurant like their own personal playground. And to make matters worse, the Esposito family's business seemed to be stuck in the 90s. And Ramsey was immediately put off by it. A ripped awning didn't exactly help their situation much either. That is ghastly. Holes everywhere. Once inside, he met Fabio, the general manager, who spilled the beans about John's destructive tendencies. Turns out, John was next door, tossing pizzas at Sal's. However, he blamed the decline on increased competition. Ramsey knew there were more to the troubles here, and when lunchtime rolled around, he was about to experience it firsthand. He first placed an order for tortellini di patate, spaghetti and meatballs, and a margarita pizza. Classic Italian stuff, right? How hard could it be? Well... Spaghetti meatballs. Margarita, please. Okay. Thank you. Wait, what? Freezing fresh pasta. Maybe they were trying to serve food they had made in the 90s in order to stay period accurate? Anyway, then the desserts arrive. That mold on there, can you show that? No, the butter's on top, so it covers that. Mmm, moldy cakes. Honestly, though, they're really setting me up for these 90s jokes way too well. So are we supposed to, like, put a fresh one every day so we can throw it out? Are you kidding me? So here was the situation. 
rotting desserts on display, and frozen, tasteless tortellini. Joe from MasterChef would about have an aneurysm if he got anywhere near this place. That aside, Ramsey sniffed out more trouble as he discovered an overwatered, stagnant plant. Oh, that's disgusting. Mm, nothing like having that dripping on your food to enhance your dining experience. Top tier service right there. But the disastrous service wasn't over. The meatballs were practically made of rubber, the pizza was an oily mess, and John, when confronted with criticism, backed up with facts, mind you, threw a tantrum. So why I'm here, if no one's caring. Okay. Please. Now, this is the part where they really messed up. During the dinner service, customers found meat bones in vegetarian sauce. And nope, it wasn't a pretty sight. What's that? A bone. I'm a vegetarian sauce. John seemed like he didn't really care, and his recklessness showed in the business. That's what makes it bad. Joe, just clarify something for me. We could possibly kill him. Kill someone. The customer looked like he'd pass out at any moment. But did John take responsibility? Hi, this is Sal's Pizzeria. I need an ambulance. The customer's not feeling well. Oh man, that's a one-star Yelp review waiting to happen. But in order to try and salvage the mess, the restaurant was shut down, with Ramsey confronting John about... Well, everything. But what Ramsey found when he checked out the freezer was absolutely horrifying. Oh, this is a joke. Look at that. Oh, come on. Something, something. That food was probably bought in the 90s. Something, something. All right, I'm done beating the dead horse now. Ramsey then urged John to let go of the past and reinstated a sleek new sign with modern decor and a revamped menu. We got stunning turquoise walls. That gives that nice, vibrant pop. Hopefully they turn things around for the better from there. But here comes a restaurant which had definitely seen better days. Shelly Winters, the owner, once had a thriving catering business, thanks to her mother Mary's retirement fund investment in the restaurant. But soon, Blackberries, a soul food joint in Plainfield, New Jersey, seemed to lose its soul. If you ask me, using up their entire retirement fund to open this poor excuse for a restaurant was a bold move. And now, my turn to be bold. Make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. I've got a ton of cool stuff coming, and you definitely don't want to miss it. And hey, you can also access some crazy behind-the-scenes moments and win some cool prizes along the way just by clicking this tab right here and becoming a member of my channel. All right, back to it. The decision to use that retirement fund backfired real bad. Daddy put the check in the bank this afternoon. Oh, okay. Despite it, though, Shelly was convinced that Blackberries had it all. Great decor, great food, great location, but the customers and staff begged to differ. So, great according to who, Shelly? The problem is Shelly is in denial. She thinks that the decor is amazing. They saw her as a control freak in denial, a horrible combination. And as a result, the place was drowning in over $200,000 of debt. When Ramsey arrived, he came face to face with a disco ball nightmare, with records dangling from the ceiling. He then met James, the general manager, and Mary, the baker. And surprise, surprise, Shelly and James were engaged. Nothing like a dash of workplace drama to spice up some soul food, right? Anyway. Ramsey ordered collard greens, pork chops with mac and cheese, chitlins, and red velvet cake, hoping for a soulful experience, probably reminiscing of better days with Mama Sherry. But the meal started on a sour note. Dry pork chops, overcooked mac and cheese, and microwaved leftovers. And well, check this out. Just like some on my plate. That's like playing Mozart on a kazoo. You lose, like, everything good about it. What's more, the collard greens were soggy, and the chitlins. Oh, the chitlins. <laughs> yeah, they had to pray before eating them. And, well, that compelled a bathroom visit from Ramsey. Quite literally. Holy crap. Despite it, though, Ramsey braced himself to face the red velvet cake. And his reaction was surprising. Wow. I had to wait to the end. After the horrible experience, Ramsey met the kitchen staff to lay down the truth about the lunch disaster. So, I just had an embarrassing lunch. 
brutal honesty or just a normal Ramsey reality check. Either way, things were about to get spicy. Returning for dinner, Ramsey spotted a mouse, and chaos ensued. Ramsey was taken aback when Shelly blamed him for planting the mouse. Oh, what is that? Bloody hell. Anyway, after the rodent drama, Shelly wanted to shut the place down herself, but Ramsey wasn't willing to give up. But she was willing to leave her customers hanging. You out of here, I'm out of here. Excuse me, go. Pizza ovens and walks. I don't know, neither of those screamed down south to me. Anyway, to fix the issue, Ramsey introduced a fryer and a South Bend stove, bidding farewell to the walk. But Shelly wasn't pleased with the changes. Let's get one thing straight, okay? Can you please work on ticket one? Yeah, funnily enough, she had emotional attachment to the walk, which was a twist nobody saw coming. Cut to the relaunch and the new system started well, but Shelly reverted to old habits, practically sabotaging the kitchen. When things started to fall apart, Shelly retreated to her office and refused to face the music. Well, this owner needed more than a makeover to turn things around. But here comes an owner who lost something important along the way. Passion. I'm talking about Sushi Co. in Thousand Oaks, California, a restaurant owned by the husband and wife duo Akira and Lisa Hate. Japanese restaurant called Sushi Co. Sushi in California, huh? Not exactly super creative, but if it's good, it's good, I guess. Still, thanks to his undying spirit and hard work, Akira, who was once a sous chef at the restaurant, climbed the culinary ladder to become the owner. But now, the family business was on the rocks, losing $15,000 to $20,000 a month. And the Hate couple's marriage was hanging on by a thread. Credit card debt is hundreds of thousands. But when Ramsey arrived, he was puzzled by the lack of customers. He was also puzzled when he was asked to try the sushi pizza. Yeah, you heard that right, sushi pizza. I'm not gonna even try to justify it. However, during his tasting, he encountered miso soup that was more salty than hot. Not really putting the appetizing in appetizer. Miso soup doesn't taste very fresh. It's not actually very hot either. If that wasn't enough, a little bit of hair snuck its way onto one of his plates. Were they even trying back there? Sounds greater. Well, well, well. Now it was time for the sushi pizza, and how did it turn out? Sorry. And the crowd goes mild. But wait till you see what Ramsey found in the kitchen. From reused skewer sticks to a chef blindly agreeing to some really dumb things, Ramsey was surprised how the place was even open. Proper fresh fish and it doesn't actually happen. What's more, the restaurant had ruined more than just their finances. When Ramsey talked with Sammy and Hana, Akira's children, they had so much to share. It was an idea for us to come help and wouldn't give them a break if they needed to, but not to be here. Now, coming to the dinner service, there were more problems in store. From burn skewer sticks, hopefully those weren't the reused ones, to customer complaints, to a malfunctioning fryer, and a broken fridge being held together by bags of ice, Ramsey felt that Sushi Co. was better off shut down. I washed the stick and everything is clean. What's the problem? After the dinner disaster, Ramsey confronted Akira, frustrated by how blasé he was in his response. And this is when he learned that Akira's spirit was broken, and he was in dire need of a confidence boost. I can do it this time. I can lift that island. Gordon hooked them up with new gear, and Akira finally cracked a smile seeing the new stash of fridges and fryers. Filled with renewed confidence, Akira rocked the kitchen on relaunch night, dishing out fresher fish than ever before. And now it was time for the Kitchen Nightmares crew to wave their magic wand, and overnight, the joint received a makeover, with a new look and an upgraded menu. Talk about turning things around for the better. Anyway, up next is Jay Willie's in South Bend, Indiana, a barbecue joint run by a trio, husband and wife duo Rick and Trisha, and their friend, John William. Wonder where the name comes from. He's gotta be the spark. He's gotta be the fire. He can't just be back there. Uh... 
Now, barbecue in Indiana isn't exactly traditional, so depending on where the pitmaster got their stripes, it could go either way. Delight or despair. Is it the mud? Uh, have, this is bad. No. The whole dinner is gone. As for Jay Willie's, it turned out to be despair. It's a frozen patty. I'd rather have a little bit of bacon burn. Initially successful, the restaurant started losing its sizzle, with Rick and Trisha living three hours away and trusting the day-to-day -to, -day to John, who left no stone unturned to drive the business into the ground. The jar. The standards have declined so far that I, I'm not even sure we can revive it. When Ramsey arrived, he was unimpressed by the outdated appearance in a sign that seemed desperate for attention. Maybe it was the owner's cry for help? After that ghastly sign at the bottom. Whenever a sign's flashing, it means desperation. Either way, the flashy pictures on the menu and the decor failed to impress Ramsey, who ordered a loaded baked potato pizza, beef ribs, and a pulled pork cheese bow. Wait, uh, run that back again? A pizza loaded with potatoes? Ramsey isn't too hard on me because this type of food wasn't my idea. Oh, wait till you see it hit the table. Holy mackerel. That's the strangest pizza I've ever seen. Meanwhile, Ramsey couldn't help but take in the gloomy atmosphere. It's had a thousand buffaloes walking all over it. Holy shit. The restaurant's condition was so dire that Ramsey actually got a priest's blessing before digging in. Yes, what's yes. that? Would you mind just blessing my food? Oh, yeah, oh would you? sure. Yeah. But that blessing fell on deaf ears since the food was terrible. Like, the pizza was drowning in ranch dressing. Sort of wallpaper paste. So the pizza sucks. As for the rest of the meal, well, let me give Ramsey the honors. Yeah, and they were serving this slop to their customers on a daily basis. Well, it wasn't surprising that the kitchen was found to be filled with frozen and canned ingredients. And what was John's excuse? They had no head chef on board. And when Ramsey confronted the owners, he got a front row seat to Trisha blaming everything on John. Anyway, Ramsey stayed back to observe the dinner service, and he was appalled by the frozen pizza ingredients and cheap cuts made at every corner. It's frozen. Holy and of course, most dishes were returned to the kitchen by unhappy customers. Yeah, I want something I'm gonna eat. Okay. After the disastrous service, the staff admitted that they were embarrassed, blaming it all on their dwindling paychecks. I have mouths at home to feed. But Ramsey was prepared to face the worst. He decided to inspect the fridge, which on Kitchen Nightmares is never a good idea. Tomatoes. Soft. Rotten. Ugh. From rotten vegetables to blood-soaked meat, this place was in desperate need of a cleanup. Peppers. The whole box is rotten. The following day, Ramsey met the owners at a church and delved into their troubles and financial woes. With deeper insight, he brought in fresh ingredients and taught the staff how to whip up a new burger special. However, once the orders started to pile up, the relaunch collapsed and customers were left unhappy. And the disappointment combined with the long wait is too much for one customer to bear. Although Ramsey questioned the owner's commitment to change, he didn't fail to revamp the place. A reduced menu and homemade barbecue sauce were introduced, aiming for a fresh start. And what do you know? Despite a few hiccups, the customers loved the food. And the owners were hopeful they'd be able to turn things around. Almost like Ramsey knows what he's doing. But here comes the most arrogant owner of all time, Joe Nagy. You see, when Ramsey set his sights on Mill Street Bistro in Norwalk, Ohio, he wasn't prepared to come face to face with the most difficult owner he has ever had to deal with. Amy and Sammy, take a hike. We've got the new hotness. Bought a livestock ranch and decided to open Mill Street Bistro. Anyway, Joe was a livestock ranch owner, and he believed his bistro complemented the ranch, envisioning it as some sort of fine dining. However, the staff claimed he was delusional, cutting corners while claiming it was all fresh, scratch-made food. What's more, Chef Tom let Ramsay in on a little trade secret. The food was more like going from freezer to table, not farm to fork. As customer complaints rose, servers Rebecca and Amy resented Joe's treatment and the quality of the food that they needed to serve to them. 
However, oblivious to his role in the restaurant's woes, Joe thought the lack of customers was his only problem. But let's not forget that he didn't even encourage the locals to dine at his place. Now, when Ramsay arrived at the bistro, he was confused about the fake fire and questionable name tag sported by the staff. But wait till you see what they were serving. Ramsay ordered an array of dishes, but was visibly shocked by the high prices, especially for steak. While most of the meal was disappointing, when Ramsay gathered the staff, the poorly executed French onion soup arrived further setting the tone for a disastrous meal. Jesus, belly melted. Jesus. As the drama unfolded, Ramsay was so disgusted that he left the restaurant hungry. But was Joe bothered at all by it? Absolutely not. He continued to claim that his elk was top notch. But I don't see anything on the oysters. Right. Well, I got it in there. Returning for dinner service, Ramsay remained unimpressed prompting Joe's denial and a heated exchange for the ages. Possibly one of the wildest confrontations I've ever seen on the show. And I'm asking for fucking, fucking responsible. Help. I'm asking for fucking help. Then wake up! Ramsey was witness both to Joe's shortcomings and explosive arguments, and there was not a shred of doubt in his mind. The owner, and more importantly, his arrogance, were responsible for the downfall of the place. You shouldn't even be in the kitchen. Yeah, get out of here! Get out of here! You put Let's it finish it. Ramsey was desperate to show Joe the truth. And so, he arranged a staff meeting where he urged everyone to vent their frustration. Little did they know that Joe watched from an adjacent room, secretly listening to everything they had on their minds that told me every one of them was a piece of shit, and he had to go down the street to eat. Wow. Exposed, Joe apologized. Ramsey then introduced cheaper dishes and prepared a burger, challenging Joe's resistance to change. Cut to the relaunch, though, and Joe and Ramsey were back to locking horns in yet another heated argument. However, Ramsey was determined to prove Joe wrong. He unveiled a new menu that emphasized fresh food to earn Joe's confidence. Burger than you would do, oh yeah, serving loins, serving chops. Correct. What's more, Ramsey went one step further and introduced chef Brian Goodman, who is ready to help set up the kitchen and interview a new chef for the job. To Brian Goodman. Chef. All right. Oh, nice. <laughs> As the community embraced the changes, the relaunch night arrived with efficient kitchen operations and delighted customers. Just eat this <laughs> I think the Mustard Bistro finally has a chance to make it. In the end, Joe faced the reality that he shouldn't be in the kitchen if Mill Street Bistro was to succeed. But, well, I guess some things just don't change. Because soon, Joe is back to his old ways, and nope. Despite all the years that have gone by, he still hasn't forgiven Ramsay. So these were some of the times when customers got sick on Kitchen Nightmares. Maybe not explicitly, but people were definitely getting sick. But if I missed your favorite moment, don't forget to share it in the comments below. But hold on a sec. If you thought this video was crazy, then don't forget to check out this next one right here. It's even crazier.